The Bar Kokhba revolt is not only a great piece of Jewish military history, it's also a lens on life in contemporary Israel. So first, a quick review. About 60 years after the Romans took over Jerusalem and destroyed the temple, a faction of the Jewish people supported violent resistance, and Bar Kokhba led them in a guerrilla uprising. Despite an overwhelming opposing military force, they triumphed and re-established Jewish self-rule. Bar Kokhba was heralded by some, including the giant Rabbi Akiva, as a messiah who would make the Jewish people independent again. And he was reviled by other Jews who considered this whole revolt crazy folly. This was an inspiring tale when the modern state of Israel was founded, where scrappy survivors beleaguered by surrounding enemies, and it is our destiny to overcome the odds. Bar Kokhba incorporated Jewish symbols and language into this rule, an inspiration for Zionist leaders to do the same. This wasn't just a nationalism for a collection of people who happened to be Jewish. It was a Jewish state that incorporated all sorts of Jewish symbols, like putting a lulav and etrog on the coins, for instance. That was very useful for early modern Israelis. They weren't building a Russian or Yiddish-speaking state. It was a Hebrew-speaking Jewish state. Bar Kokhba worked as a Zionist icon, setting this precedent. And while the Bar Kokhba rebellion was romanticized by Israelis for a long time, in truth, it was a total catastrophe for the Jewish people. The first Jewish-Roman war was bad for the Jews, but the rebellion was far worse. The revolt was initially successful, but after two and a half years of Jewish rule, Rome returned with a vengeance, killed ruthlessly, paved over Jerusalem in salt, and exiled nearly all of the Jews. It was the end of Jewish sovereignty for nearly 2,000 years. The rabbis of the Talmud bemoaned the revolt and its horrific consequences. The blood ran so thick and deep that it was up to a horse's nostril in blood. Their writing has a feeling of, if we had just let go of this nationalistic fantasy, the death and sustained exile never would have happened. Here's the paradox of how Zionism relates to religious Jewish history. It sees itself as continuous with these stories, but in some cases, it rejects their lessons. So the fact that Israelis would claim Bar Kokhba as a great last story of Jewish nationalism, even though religious tradition was like, ugh, Bar Kokhba was terrible and created all these problems, it makes total sense because they're embracing the heroic element of the story while ignoring the religious ramifications. In fact, in the 1980s, Israeli intellectuals started questioning the use of this story as inspiration. When we follow messianic figures into actual political consequences, they said, it ends badly. This isn't the only time Zionism took the part of a story that worked and left the religious piece out. For instance, there was a fascinating tiny group, the 1940s Canaanite movement, that claimed ownership to the land of Israel while rejecting nearly all of the religious traditions. Or, a bigger example, Hanukkah. For most of history, rabbinic Judaism de-emphasized the military side of it and made it much more about the religious miracles of, you know, we found enough oil to light the temple and the larger idea of light in the darkest time of the year and the spiritual aspect of God providing miracles. It wasn't until contemporary Israel that the military side of the Hanukkah story starts being revived as the main emphasis. Zionism encountered a religious holiday and made it a holiday of heroism, about a small number of people who defeat the enemy. People who live like me, talk like me, are fighting against an evil invader? Yeah, okay, I can connect to that. Israeli children's Hanukkah music leans toward military marching songs, and if you contrast that to the sweet spirituality of Hanukkah in America, it's extraordinary. What's happened in different Jewish cultures is that we mold our holidays based on our political realities. We live Jewish lives filtered through the lens of what's happening today, and there are two different todays, one in Israel and one in America. Seeing how Judaism is different over there invites you to think about how your experience of Jewish holidays and history has been shaped by what's going on here. One last example. Israelis light huge bonfires on Lag Omer in part to celebrate the victories of Bar Kokhba. Yet Americans hardly know this holiday exists. We are shaped by our surroundings, and whether we realize it or not, religion, even its history, continues to be shaped as well. 